Rad TRT for Warriors coming at you with a new review on Playing With Fire's video. Everything you need to know about testosterone, my honest experience, and results. What's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to share with you my experience with testosterone replacement therapy. I'm going to go over what my results have been from injecting testosterone for almost a year now. All the things that I learned along the way through trial and error and painstaking research and all the things that I wish I knew initially. Unfortunately, just like with pickup, there's so much bad information on this topic. People who have no idea what the fuck they're talking about, giving their opinions, which are not actually based on any real experience or scientific fact. That's why in this video, I want to clear up all the, you know, all the testosterone myths and just give you guys the real scoop on this topic. Answer all the questions that I personally had myself a year ago. This is going to be the video that I wish someone showed me initially. Now, I know this is not directly related to Tinder or text game or profile pictures, but if you're serious about maximizing your success with women, you have to maximize your health as well. This is because women are just biologically wired to be attracted to strong, healthy, fertile men. If they couldn't tell the difference between that and a weakling with a limp dick, then as a species, we would have never made it. So where does testosterone fit into all of this? Unfortunately, one of the big issues, one of the big issues facing men in the 21st century is on average lower levels of testosterone. Men now have less testosterone on average than they did 50 years ago. This is just due to, you know, all the stresses that come with living in the 21st century. All the shit in the food, all the shit in the water, all the shit in the air, all the chemicals, all the cell phones. Unfortunately, our bodies were just not designed to thrive in the environment that we live in. However, fortunately, we also have certain tools at our disposal that they didn't have 50 years ago. And one of those tools is testosterone replacement therapy. Now, like, you know, any tool, it's not right for every situation. But for some people, in some cases, it can be very beneficial. So let me quickly touch on how I got started with all of this. I've been getting my blood work done since I was 18, you know, just always tracking my health and being vigilant about it. And my total testosterone was always, mm, it was okay. You know, it was around 600, 650, you know, not great. Probably should be higher for someone, you know, who's 18, 19. But, you know, it's not too terrible. My free testosterone, though, was always on the low side. This was due to a high sex hormone binding globulin, which is an issue a lot Gross, of people have. I'm going to touch a little bit more on that later. So due to the high SHBG, my free testosterone was eh, pretty meh. You know, something that a 40 or 50 year old might have. But it was never too terrible that, you know, I really needed to address it. Then about a year and a half ago, I got hit with Lyme disease. And one of the issues I had with that is that it caused all my hormones to crash. I basically was feeling like shit. You know, I lost a lot of weight. I went from being, you know, like 160 to 135 pounds. I was literally like a walking skeleton. If you want to get an idea of what I look like, just check out the videos from a year ago. And also I had a really bad neck injury that was just, you know, taking a while to heal. So basically I was looking to, you know, go back to where I used to be with my health. Now I probably could have just waited and just slowly bounced as I treat the Lyme, but slowly, slowly things would have more or less returned back to baseline. But my baseline was never that great to begin with. So because of that, those two reasons, I decided to give testosterone a shot. So here I am about a year later, I've been testosterone for TRT for about a year now, and I'm not going to say that it made a night and day difference, but it was one of the things that I did that definitely helped me improve my health. I'm about 165 pounds now, you know, pretty good shape, just constantly going to the gym and putting out muscle and, you know, training six days a week. So my health is definitely better now than it was a year ago. And one of those reasons is using testosterone. So how do you know if testosterone might be right for you if you're looking at infomercial? Now first, I want to be clear, nothing in this video is intended to be medical advice. In case you didn't know, I'm not a doctor, so this is just opinion. With that out of the way, if I was talking to a family member or a friend, I'd say the first and most important step is to go get your blood work done. When it comes to your health, you really don't want to be playing the guessing game, you just want to be very scientific and objective. So the three tests that you're going to want to do are total testosterone, which is a test people usually do, but the two they forget exactly. are free testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin. And it's essentially you check all these three things because if you have a decent total testosterone, but you have a really high sex hormone binding globulin like I did, which soaks up all your free testosterone, then functionally you're gonna have low testosterone 
because free testosterone is what actually determines how you feel and function. Next, let's take a look at how you'd interpret your own results using my blood work as an example. So first, let's take a look at my labs from a little exactly. over a year ago. My total testosterone is 700. So something really important that you also have to add in here is your LH, FSH, TSH, which he has in here, but he doesn't have LH and FSH. I don't see it. It could be on here, but it might be lower. Um, but you want those as well because you have to be able to diagnose between primary and secondary hypogonadism. Um, and you want, you want to know the difference between those. Uh, the doctors need to know the difference between that. But, you know, just like these... Um, these levels here show right he's got a 700 uh total and your general practitioner doctor is going to look at that and they're going to say oh well, you're in the range you're totally fine well that's an opinion that is not a medical diagnosis the medical diagnosis comes from the free testosterone which if you're basically under 30 free testosterone you're gonna feel like shit no matter what and so it really doesn't matter even if you had a thousand total testosterone what really matters is how you feel but then also this free testosterone number which um basically when we when someone goes on trt the goal is to get them up to the 50s total testosterone so they're feeling good they don't have a lot of the side effects or whatnot but they're able to uh, have more energy and there's not any negative consequences coming from that. And the, that's just kind of the general number. So anywhere between 30 and, you know, in the 50s, 60s kind of number in that general range, this is very individual. And this is not something that uh, there's just a general number for people. But also when we're talking about hypogonadism, right, the, the lab core range here, supposedly you're healthy if you're between 264 and 916. Well, what is that variance? That variance, and actually we talked about in one of our other videos with uh, Dr. Traverson, who created this range. This is an epidemiological range of a population between 18 and 80-year-old people. Well, do I want to be looped in with a bunch of people who are sick, number one, living in an industrialized society? And do I also want to be in a range of older people as well? No. <laughs> So I'm going to stay in my own personal lane with my own personal health. And I don't want to be looked at as if I'm part of this epidemiological study. That's not a placebo blind, placebo controlled blind study, right? The study is an epidemiological study of a group of populations of people. And as Dr. Travison said, that is not to be applied individually or in practice it is a general picture of a population it tells you a story it does not tell you the individual and any doctor who takes this out of context is risking their medical license very clearly as dr travison said it is a picture we are not to use it in practice and base treatment off of this number and if you do i personally <laughs> will come after you <laughs> That's not how this works. And at this point, we need a class action lawsuit because they're taking Dr. Travison's work out of context and applying it to individuals. And that's not how we're supposed to be applying this. You apply it based in practice, based on the person's symptoms. And that's what the guidelines even state through the AMA and through the uh, Endocrinology Society. And, you know, we treat symptoms and then we have the lab ranges as you know confident backups for this but it is not the total picture and it is not how we treat hypogonadism 109 now you gotta keep in mind that the lab range they give you you know it's based on men from the age of 18 to 80 i should you not so you definitely want to be at the very upper end of the spectrum when it comes to total and free testosterone and my total testosterone is in the upper range but my free testosterone is definitely on the low side. And this is because my sex hormone binding globulin is through the roof, which is soaking up most of the testosterone my body makes. Now, let's take a look at my labs from like a week or two ago. It looks like not much has changed at first glance, but in reality, the amount of free testosterone I have has essentially doubled. And this is because I increased, you know, the total amount of testosterone that I have to work with, with TRT. And then I lowered my sex hormone binding globulin with the supplement boron, and as a result of that, the amount of free testosterone that my body has to work with is almost twice as high. 
hopefully this helps you understand the numbers a bit better. But basically, you want your free testosterone to be in the very upper end of the range. If that's the case, then awesome. If not, then you can consider how you're going to improve it. And one of the tools at your disposal is TRT. It's not the only tool, but it's the most powerful one. However, before you consider going down that route, I do really recommend that you try to maximize what your body can produce naturally. And you do this by focusing on the variables that really matter, which is food, sleep, and exercise, really just maximizing those three things and also fixing any vitamin or mineral deficiencies that you might have. That's also pretty big. You know, most of the supplements or whatever, the testosterone boosters are largely horse shit. So really just focus on those three things, fixing any deficiencies. Then you can logically evaluate you know, what your best case scenario baseline and see, you know, if you're happy with that or, you know, it's something you still want to keep tinkering with. Now, if you do decide to give TRT a shot, I do really recommend you do it under the supervision of a doctor. It's just one of those things you'd rather be safe rather than sorry. Uh, so I would just go on Google and look up functional medicine doctors in your city and find someone, you know, who has really good reviews and schedule a consultation. Personally, I would avoid traditional endocrinologists because most of them are just going to be a waste of time, if I'm being frank. So once you find a doctor, you know, come up with a plan, you know, tell him what your goals are, you know, he'll order blood work, and then you can kind of take it from there. Next, I want to go over a few things that I discovered that I think can help really maximize all the positive benefits of testosterone and minimize, if not eliminate, any side effects. Like me personally, I don't really have any side effects. I think a big part of that is, you know, because I'm healthy and I have decent genetics when it comes to this, but also just due to following these things. So first is sticking to intramuscular injections. There's a lot of different ways you can administer testosterone. There's creams, there's gels, there's pellets. But what I find is the most effective way, and most doctors will tell you this, is to do intramuscular. So in my opinion, if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it right. Second is dividing and spacing out the injections. So you can inject testosterone once a week, once every two weeks. You know, you can even divide your dose by seven to daily. There's a lot of different schemes. But what The reason why we do intermuscular is for stable blood concentrations. So when you look at the studies or you talk to somebody who's on pellets or on creams or gels, basically they skyrocket their total testosterone and their free testosterone. Then SHBG and albumin and other sparing signals take over and then start stealing that. So you've now just skyrocketed it and now you're bottoming out. So they just don't produce stable blood concentrations. Now the opposite, I guess, would probably be estradiol and maybe progesterone to women. I'm not an expert in this. I really don't uh, focus on women's health, to be honest. It's a little bit more complicated than just the... Um, just the testosterone side of things but i would even if i was a woman lean on testosterone placement for estradiol um, because it's going to be upregulating that as well but we're utilizing stable blood concentrations we're using intermuscular injections to the quad to the biceps to uh, you can even do your chest or um sub q um, there's debate on if sub q is, is you know beneficial or not for um oil-based medications that gets a little bit frisky um, but just stick to what works because the whole point of using this is we're using it as a tool to then work on the rest of your health testosterone is the first thing after you get that dialed in then you can work on the other stuff then you can work off getting off the benzodiazepines getting off the depression medication getting off the shit medication that the VA gives you. Whole point of this is stability. What most people find works the best for them is to do two or three times a week. Doesn't mean doing three times the dose, it just means dividing a dose by three and spacing it out. So me personally, I do once every three days. And I just find this really keeps my levels in check. It keeps them from skyrocketing by day one and then you know slowly crashing by day seven. It just co constantly keeps them in a good place. In case you're wondering, my dose is 180 milligrams a week, so I do like 80 milligrams once every three days. Third is utilizing HCG. So again, any good doctor should also recommend this, but basically this keeps your body, you know, still producing testosterone on its own. It keeps your balls from completely shutting down, which is something that you don't want. Oh, this is and fourth is being really weary of estrogen blockers. In my opinion, from everything I researched, 
is that estrogen blockers are way more harmful than you know TRT ever could be. And that's because they should cause all kinds of side effects. If you block too much estrogen, your bones can even become brittle and you can have all these like stress fractures, which you really don't want because you don't want superhumanly low levels of estrogen. You want your estrogen to be just like, you know, at an optimal level for a man. So what I recommend is that you try, you know, TRT without loss. estrogen for a month or two, then you get your blood work done and you evaluate if you really need an estrogen mm -hmm. blocker. And if you do, you only use as much as you need. Really being careful with that, not to overuse them. Like me personally, I don't need an estrogen blocker at all, just because my body naturally really doesn't convert that much testosterone to estrogen. And a lot of people like that. But for some of them, you do need an estrogen blocker. But exactly. again, it's just, you know, you want to be very careful this how guy's much you use. 10 times ahead of the game. And those are pretty much my thoughts on Grab testosterone. So I'm not saying everyone should hop on the TRT bandwagon. A lot of people don't need it. And I do really recommend that you maximize what you can do naturally before you even consider it. That's personally what I did. Uh, but you know, I also don't think it should be something that should be stigmatized. Like there's this really weird thing with testosterone where dudes are like, oh, where do you get it for testosterone? I get it for my balls. Like it's, it's just kind of like this weird stigma, you know, like around using it, but it's really just a tool. Like it's a tool at our disposal that should be evaluated objectively and not based on like an ego or based on, you know, false information. Hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and also show me some love by smashing the like button hitting the subscribe button, clicking the bell for notifications. Let me know if you want me to make more of these kinds of videos exactly. talking about you know health and other things not related to Techscape. But don't worry, I'll still do plenty of Techscape. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Well, so I'm really impressed, impressed with playing for, with Fire. He's uh, a thousand times ahead of the game. I tell you what, um, you, know, you get a lot of, you know, there's other videos that, you know, I'm going to eventually do reviews on and stuff like that. And it's going to be more of me pulling, well, my beard out, I guess, since I don't have hair, but pulling my hair out and uh, hitting my head against the wall of, um, like drifter for you know for instance right this kid uh you know he goes to the dock they put him on fucking clomid monotherapy uh, i bet he was on an ai as well at the same time you know he's just getting abused by these fucking doctors who really have no business doing this treatment at all and let alone even putting someone on clomid it is a last ditch emergency because you have to and there's a shortage of hmg hcg fertility medication if there is a shortage and it's a last ditch effort and you're the only person left on earth okay maybe you should risk your eyesight but fuck that i'm sorry no one's gonna be you should not be risking your eyesight to have children okay if it's the only thing that you can use then adopt a kid, okay? Like, no, we don't need to be using fucking Clomid. There's enclomiphene, my understanding is that it's technically a different medication that works in a similar fashion. It's a selective estrogen regulator modulator. It's a CIRM, I know that's the acronym. It upregulates some shit, and then you get fertility going. Um, LH and FSH signals and all that kind of stuff. So... In any case, I'm really proud of uh, playing with fire because we need more people talking about this. We need entry videos like this as well in the industry. But in general, this is the way you do it. Like he's saying, get your blood tested. Get your free and your total testosterone, your LH, FSH, TSH, PSA. You get those uh, run you go to Dr. Frank at the Frank Institute or Dr. Eric at Prime X or you go to uh, Defy or you go to Aspire Rejuvenation. Get your levels tested. You find out from an expert if it's needed or not. You dropped 100 bucks, whatever. You need it or you might not need it. Who knows? You might have other shit going on that you get diagnosed because you went to a doctor who actually knows what they're talking about. Your general practitioner, endocrinologists have no fucking clue what they're doing. They're dealing with metabolic disease and cancer. They're not the people to go to. You want to go to experts who actually do this day in, day out, who have thousands of patients. And they know the trends and they know, you know, the, the different um, side effects and whatnot. Um,
I hope you guys enjoy this. Check out TRT for Warriors on Facebook. Um, check out Test Levels. Shout out to More Plates, More Dates for doing this video. Uh, a review of his review earlier. And you guys have an awesome spring. Be safe out there. And uh, feel free to reach out anytime.